All right, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to our second weekly football coaches luncheon here at the Black and Gold Room on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. My name is Haptam Keleta, Sports Information Director for UAPB. And uh, on behalf of our new AD, Melvin Hines II, we thank each and every one of you for coming out today. Definitely didn't have the uh, result that we expected this past weekend, but uh, looking forward to uh, a big, big uh, game this week against uh, Prairie View. But without further ado, we will let Coach Cedric Thomas uh, give you a brief breakdown of this past weekend's trip against a, uh, an excellent football team in South Dakota. Coach Thomas. Uh, good evening. I'm just kind of recapping, uh, you know, winning hostile environment you know, this, this, uh, this past weekend. And, and score one doesn't indicate um, what we got out of that game, but, you know, it was a great indication of what we, uh, what we want to establish. You know, when you look at that, that program and the leadership of that program, you know, um, coach been there about 22 years and um, had a lot of you know ups and downs and trials and tribulations during that journey. And um, you know it, going in, we we knew um, as a coaching staff, you know what type of environment it was, what type of football team, what type of program um, had been established there. And it was good, you know, right now in this journey as we try to establish that type of program for our kids to, to get on a, a bus, plane, or whatever, and be in that type of environment, hostile environment, about 15,000 ranked top five and one double A football. Um, you know, played a lot of Division One schools, a lot of talent, you know, a lot of history and tradition. And um, it was good for our kids to, to, to see that and experience that because a lot of times, you know, they'll get up for the FIUs and the, and the Floridas and the Georgias, but it's a lot of good 1AA teams out there that I think our kids really don't um, know about. And, you know, some in the Southland Conference and some in the OVCs and, and conference and such. So um, it was a great litmus for us to, one, see where we at, but also um, to see what type of program we want to establish. Um, Know, didn't have um, you know, all our you know uh, players at, at, at playing at our full strength. Anytime you're dealing with a program as such, you know you got to be clicking on all cylinders. And um, left a lot of kids back at home due, due to injuries and things of that sort. Or didn't play, um, but overall I was I was proud. You know of them young men. You know they fought their tails off of what they had. You know all the way until you know the, the, the score um, and, and the time ran out. So it was a lot of you know a lot of positive. We can build from it, and I sit back and just hold it in my back pocket, knowing that you know later on down the road we'll look back at this experience and say, hey, um, it helped us build the program that we wanted to. You know, um, you know, for the football god got a way of making this thing coming back full circle. You know, getting a lot of hits on, you know, running the score up and all, you know, that type of deal. But my whole thing is, you know, coach got to coach his ball club the way he has to, and it's my job to put our kids in the best position, to, um, you know, for us stopping it. So, you know, I didn't entertain any of that. But I just know we'll be a better ball club um, coming forward, and we gotta, you know, can't um, lay in our pity too long. We got an explosive Prairie View uh, football team with a lot of coaches on their staff who are familiar with our kids, and we just, um, you know, eager to go back to work. All right, Coach Thomas, thank you for that. At this time, we'll uh, take questions and close out uh, South Dakota State, and then we'll uh, advance to Prairie View. So. Cameo has the mic, if you'll just raise your hand, anybody in the audience, not just limited to the members of the media. Yeah, feel free, you know, I ain't that coach that, you know, I want the good and the bad, you know, please, ask them. You know, I don't want no elements in the room. Coach, you, uh, you're in a situation where, where most of us back here looked up and we realized that Patrick Shannon did not start and we didn't see Skyler out there as well. What's the situation with that? Uh, why didn't they uh, uh, play the game? You know, we, after that, uh, the Cumberland game, you know, we Shannon shaking his hand, you know, saying that it's hurting. And so uh, Rob did a good job of getting him to the to Little Rock and got an MRI and he had a broke finger. Um, so that was a um, two weeks, you know, no matter what, um, that, that he couldn't participate. So, um, you know, that kind of hurt. And then I'm looking at Skyler that Sunday and he got an ice pack on his shoulder. Well, I'm thinking that's just some, some preventive maintenance. You know, I'm kind of excited because the young guy, you know, who I said is the future, get a chance to go in this hostile environment and, you know, get to put us on his back. And, you know, I'm getting Monday that, you know, he can't go either. And I'm like, all right, next man up, you know. And, um, you know, so that's what we had with those guys. But, you know, just got clearance as of five minutes ago that, you know, they, they hook, line, and sinker for this week. So we excited about that part. You know, a lot of you guys may not know, Josh Wilkes went down right before halftime, you know, and I'm cringing saying, Boy, you know, we sitting there with a lot of productivity that's not only uh, missing the South Dakota game, but I best why I go down and don't know if we'll have him this week. So he'll be going to Little Rock, um, you know, today, 
and um, you know he got an X-ray, you know, up there in South Dakota with no structural damage. So we think, you know, he should be full go. So that's a positive. But that's what we stand with with the injuries, um, you know, to the one and two quarterback. You know, a lot of people may uh, look at the uh, score and probably try to figure uh, out, out what the hell happened. But uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, this, these guys have played against one double school. I noticed on their schedule uh, in the past they played Nebraska and they played Ohio State and so forth. What do you say to your players after a loss uh, in terms of the score? Now, what do you say? What did you say to the team afterwards? Well, you know, after I, I pretty much told them we're going to get what we deserve and we got what we deserve. Um, you know, I told them during the game, you can look at that scoreboard all you want to, but them guys will score 100, you know, because, you know, when it gets to that part and that one double A and them playoffs, them points and rankings and seed means a lot. So I don't think Coach, you know, um, went out to say we're going to run the score. You know, I think it was a deal for him after seeing A&T beat Jacksonville State and, you know, beat some one double A teams and they moving up in the rankings and it could be another team from our conference getting the playoffs. Well, let me just try to prove a point, you know, just from a numerical standpoint, and I can go from a three seed to a two seed. And I can get in the playoffs, uh, you know. So, but basically, I just told them, you know, um, you know, what you put in is what you get out. But that's a good football team, and what we try and establish um, during our journey is that, you know, I want to be able to look two, three years from now and sit there and say, hey, you remember, you know, that ninety to six um, when we in a situation as such, and hey, this is where we got to where we are because of games like that. Coach, you you mentioned the fact that it was a litmus test for you. Uh, you know, you got hired in December, you arrived on campus in January, and uh, you, you're still getting to know some, some of the players of this team, are you not? Oh, without a doubt. You know, in, in, in situations like that, I'm all for adversity. You know, it's fine when you're 55-0. You know, that's why I was telling the crowd about these questions, asking, because I'm learning administrators, staffs, and coaches too, because a lot of them will say, the text message may say, you know, say one thing, but then, you know, when you, when you get face-to-face -face or out in the community, the situation may be different. So I'm all for adversity, you know, just to learn these kids and know, you know, my biggest thing is when I got off that plane, I went right in there and downloaded that film and I didn't want to see one person quit. Because if I saw that, then I knew where I stood with them and that's not what we teaching. You know, that's, that's not what we building. You know, our transcripts when we leave here with our degrees, we still got to compete with South Dakota State, Florida, Georgia, and uh, Miami's out of society for these jobs. So it's just not an athletic contest. You know, we got to fight forever, resources or no resources. And that's what the mindset I told these young men. You know, when I put that film on there, I want to see everybody that's out there. I want to one snap or hundred snaps to play their tails off and, and do it for the duration of their game. And for the most part, we got that. I know my boy. Oh, you got a question? Here? I do have a question. I see you have your questions written down. You're getting good. <laughs> David, just met me. How you doing, Coach? Oh, bless. I just wanted to know what did you guys do wrong? What did they do right? And what did you learn from this game? For you going further, you know, um, defensively, what we did wrong, we, you know, we didn't we didn't match up our run fits. You know, they did some different things. You know, far as you know, power schemes where you know they got an extra hat, and um, you know, for for whatever reason, our kids just kind of got starstruck. You know, and, and, and a lot of them hadn't been in that situation. The same plays that we made against Cumberland and even against Morehouse, for some reason, you know, on that stage in front of fifteen thousand people, you know, they didn't do it. Um, so I got to put them in those situations. Um, consistently, you know, whether it's those type of games or those type of practice environments. Um, so that's what we didn't do, um, you know, didn't do right. And, um, you know, as far as just getting better from it, you know, we got to make the corrections. We got to brush it off and we got to move on. Um, we got to get better um, at tackling, you know, um, being in space, um, tackling in space. And we got to get some guys back healthy. You know, I'm looking on, in the secondary, Ronald Rock is out, you know, Blake Con uh, Con Connor hadn't played, Rico Merriweather. Um, Montez Fable, you know, that's four guys that play all in the secondary where you don't have any depth. And you look around and Sean Steele, got to play um, 85 plays of defense, but he also got to play 20 plays of, of, of special teams. Um, you know, same thing with Isaiah Johnson and the same thing with um, Nigel Cannon. So, you know, we got to get some guys back healthy, um, get some, establish that depth, but we just got to go out and play football. You know, the, 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 more, the more we can go play football, the better we'll be. And the thing that they did right is they left a coach in line for 22 years to establish a program and be really good. Um, so that's what we didn't do wrong, and that's what they did right. And, and you know, what we got to do to be better. Coach, can you talk a little bit about that uh, that workhorse you have back there, number two, uh, Taylor Porter, and what he means to this ball club? You know, Taylor. You know, Taylor, great. And he came to me. You know, when we found out that the two guys, uh, quarterback wise, was going to be out, and he said, "Coach, just put it on the shoulders." Um, Taylor just got here when I, you know, when I got here. Um, you know.
know, so he's a you know creative that's bought in the program. Um, tough running back, hard nose, you know, physical kid, you know, just a team player. Um, and that's kind of was the mantra when we find out those guys was out. You know, it was just the next man up. So I'm proud of Taylor. And um, I just know when we get them quarterbacks back to fold, you know, it's going to take a lot of pressure off of him because now he don't see six and seven, eight man boxes because you got to spread out to try to cover Wilkes and Shannon and, and Scott and all those guys in the passing game. Any more questions regarding the uh, South Dakota State game? All right, we will move on to the uh, preview of the uh, SWAC opener this Saturday against Prairie View. As Coach mentioned, uh, a few of their coaches are very familiar with some of our players, so we will open the floor to uh, any questions at this moment. Coach, you, you mentioned the fact that you downloaded the film, wanted to make sure that people were hustling and didn't give up, uh, maybe a bit premature. But have you had an opportunity to look at any film on this Prairie View, uh, Prairie View team? Every game, probably about three times now. That was on Prairie View, first week of the season, because um, it's the first conference game, you know, so we all in. You know, we got game plans already ready, um, got counters and adjustments off of it. Um, you know, so, you know, to answer your question, we've been on prayer. You know, I've been kind of behind the scenes just doing things on my own. I've been against Ted for a lot of years, been a coach against Coach Dooley for a lot of years, kind of got a feel for those guys and just wanted to see one who's calling it, how much is, is, is being tweaked based on personnel that they have there. Um, so, you know, we got a notebook full of things and, you know, we can't wait to hit the field tonight, you know, to just kind of um, start putting it together. Based on your observations and what you've witnessed so far, uh, what may be your biggest challenge uh, taking on this team? You know, speed. You know, they got a running back who's leading the conference with about 600 yards rushing. Um, he had 250 yards plus against um, Sam Houston and also against North Carolina um, Central. So got a great running back, you know, that's athletic and got a big wide out that transferred from Oregon. Um, that's a junior college kid that stretched the field vertically. Um, got an athletic quarterback, so he got some weapons. You know, he, he got some guys that, some, that they can make plays um, and give an opportunity. Um, but we like our matchups, you know, we got some guys that we feel like and, um, you know, exude a lot of confidence and, and from a technical standpoint, put themselves in a position to be successful also um, with a game plan that we give them. So we're looking for a great game and some great matchups in that game. You mentioned two things about uh, your quarterback. So with, uh, they're not able to go, uh, I guess Titan will again get the nod and who backs up Titan? I mean, nobody knows about the four-string quarterback. So I need to get that question in. Yeah, David Chappell, um, you know, David Chappell played some uh, Saturday, you know, um, you know, you know, freshman, typical freshman, you know, athletic, can run around. We have to limit the package, um, you know, what we do offensively, but uh, real fast and athletic guy. Um, got to work on some of the, the, the passing concepts, but um, I don't think Titan going to start this one. You know, just talking to Shannon and Skyler, um, they got the knock, they got to go. Oh, you have another one? Yes. Thank you. Coach, what would you say to all the people that are talking bad about our football program right now? Um, people on Twitter saying we need to go ahead and get UAPB football out of the swag. What would you say to them? Let's continue to talk, you know. Um, why are you talking? You know, it's, it's getting some type of recognition. Please don't be quiet. Um, we need it. Um, it feels, you know, one's fire who, um, who, who's used to that. You know, I don't need any conversation, you know, to motivate me. Um, but, you know, that's talk, you know, all of that, just alphabets put together to make words and sentences. So it's just what you, you know, what you, you know, what marriage you put into it. So, you know, I just, you know, I think it would be tough if it was just, you know, um, if it was mute. You know, my thing is with it all is, you know, um, I hear about the rough and the swag deal and that's cool. But, you know, when we're going to get the concept of loving the swag, when somebody going to come up with a website or a page for that where we can talk about all the great things these institutions provide. You know, for once when we put up job applications for coaches or for engineers or different programs and such, because I don't see that from the SEC or the Pac-10 or none of these other conferences down in each other. And it's all, you know, fun and jokes at times, but we know we're going to have an avenue and an outlet for the uplift and the, and the loving of one, you know, who laid the foundation for this. So, you know, just far as the naysayers and the talking, that's fine. You know, uh, we still got to go out and play and um, we still got to go out and compete and show that this, this institution belongs where it is, and we'll continue to, to get better. I promise you that. Coach uh, Tim Stubbs, UAPB Television. Uh, 
fans don't like the words patience, process, things of that nature. Talk about that. You haven't been here for a very long time. It is going to be a process. Patience is going to be needed. It's not the only program like this across the country. There are several um, across the board that are taking their lumps right now, uh, taking over a program. A lot of these players you did not recruit may not fit your style yet um, as they progress, but uh, speak to that just a little bit. You know, the biggest thing is just the community and the support staff I have, you know, to, to help, you know, sit down and talk to Mr. Bennett and, and talk to people in the community, you know, about, hey, just trust the process, you know, continue to do what you do. You know, that's the motivation, you know, for me. Um, but, you know, as far as the people that don't know me, um, you know, all they can do is look at the brand. And I just hope that they um, invest in UAPB enough to just continue to, to, to physically support, financially support. And in turn, you're going to get the, you know, that stock, you know, you're going to be able to get a return on your, um, what you put in, and I think that's what we're doing. So, um, you know, my deal to it is just come see it, come invest in it, you know, come look at it, come nurture it, you know, the best way you can. And, you know, we'll see down the line what it end up, you know, uh, entailing as it relates to success, because that's not always, you know, W's and L's. You know, I could use this institution for my own personal game, win, win a lot of games, and then if I'm up and I'm gone and these young brothers not graduating and not being productive citizens, did I actually win? Um, you know, so I know who I am and, and my core being is what I'm going to establish is a program that in turn W and L's won't define us, but we know we'll have high numbers as it relates to scores, but we're going to have young brothers to lead society and go out and lead nations and generations, but also be productive citizens when it's all over. And we'll win a bunch of football games in, 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 in tail. So for the ones who's impatient, um, you know, and, and ready to want it right now, you know, I can't promise you how much, how fast it's going to be, but I promise you it will get done. Absolutely. Um, in, in a sense, the season begins Saturday, uh, three games under your belt, but there's something special about that swag opener. Yeah, talk without, about that. yeah, without a doubt. You know, the playing field is, is, is even. Um, you know, when you come in, you know, and you use those three games, it's, you know, kind of like the pregame. Um, you know, especially in my situation, I get to see kids go, you know, um, on plane, see how they travel, you know, see how they conduct business, um, you know, um, in a, a 15,000. Um, see stadium in a, in a hostile environment. You know, I get to see them after three-hour um, rain delay to come out and play a good Cumberland football team. I get to see them on the, the season opener, you know, um, at home. So, you know, I'm, I'm building that foundation with them, but also, you know, getting a chance to know them and also as coaches. You know, I haven't been on the staff with any of these guys except Coach Quinn. So just like I told them, I'm learning them too. You know, so if anything in the building that, that's out of the building, which I know won't happen, you know, then we'll deal with it accordingly because, you know, you judge a, a team or anybody, you know, by what they what they've been through. And right now, we're going through some tough times, but we're gonna roll our sleeves up, put our back against the wall, and we're gonna fight. And we know eventually, you know, we'll get ourselves up out of it. Questions regarding the uh, upcoming Prairie View game. Coach, could you talk a little bit about the mood of the team uh, as they are right now? Um, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, it, what hurt me the most is, you know, to see them kids cry, um, you know, when it was all over. That was tough. I know they worked their tails off, you know, and they better than what that score indicated, you know. Um, so that was the most disappointing part after the game, to just see them guys um, put put all, you know, they had in it, and just, you know, it didn't come out the way they felt like it. Um, but to see them, um, you know, yesterday instead of all um, getting them hours in, gives them intel of, you know, what we're doing in the future knowing that no matter what happened, I still got to go and I got to take care of my academics, you know, and to see them in the lab with, with uh, Miss Kim and um, um, Fiona, um, I'm sorry, uh, you know, that, that right there just meant everything, you know, and then after that coming in and saying, Coach, we're going to be all right, you know, we're going to keep working, we're going to keep working for you, we believe in you, thank you, I appreciate it, you know, so that right there 
just meant everything, you know, to me. And that's the foundation, you know. Uh, tough loss, come back in. We talk about school first, you know, go to school, you know, um, ain't no recess if you don't go to school. You know, see them get them study hall out, then come in, you know, talk about prayer view. So that kind of, you know, puts us at ease, you know, just as far as what type of kids we got. Because like you said, you know, we trying to we trying to figure them out. And um, I promise you we're going to be better. It ain't no doubt in my mind. <laughs> All right, any more questions for uh, Coach Thomas regarding Prairie View? Once again, uh, Coach, we thank you, and of course, we definitely have you back. Support the team uh, through thick and thin. Uh, like they mentioned, season starts this week. That's what it's all about is conference. You guys had a goal, and we saw that, and uh, still, still have plenty of opportunity to make it happen. So we all invite you 6 o'clock this Saturday at Simmons Bank Field for the conference opener against Prairie View a and It's going to be at 6 o'clock. Once again, we encourage fans to wear black as it's a blackout. So, uh, yep, we appreciate everybody coming here, and uh, we thank Coach Thomas once again. We thank all our fans and the, the media. Definitely a powerful press conference today. A powerful coaches luncheon. So without further ado, let's eat. And also, special thanks to Airmark always for their wonderful work. We do thank you guys so much, and um, let's eat.